Hey guys, it's Kaylee, and welcome back to Hippie in a Suit, where I talk about sustainability because I dream of a world where people care as much about the planet as they do about drama at the Oscars. In my previous video about education and experience for getting a job in the UN, I mentioned that I would do a video that breaks down the demographics of current UN staff, and that is what we are doing today. Now, the reason I'm doing this video is mostly just because I think it's actually really interesting to look into this data and what I found, I'm not sure a lot of people have actually looked into in depth, but I do want to be clear that I am not saying you have to be in a specific demographic to get hired or that being from a certain country or a certain age is an advantage or a disadvantage. In fact, you'll see there is a lot of diversity in the organization when you dig into the numbers. So just take it for what it is. In this video, I'm going to look at a few major demographics, including nationality, gender, age, and organization of employment. Then at the end, I will paint a portrait of the most common profile in the UN system just for fun. As always, I've linked my blog post below, and in that post, you can see links to the data explorers from the UN pages in case you want to play around with the data yourself or check out how many people from your country are employed in the system. But before we get into that, Two things. Thank you to my friend Caitlin for this very cool hippie in a suit shirt. And a quick word from our sponsor, Blue Marble Jobs. If you're looking for a job in one of the large international organizations, such as the United Nations agencies or European Union institutions, you know that it can be very challenging to keep an eye on all their vacancies, as many of them have their own separate websites that are a little different. Blue Marble Jobs is a job board that collects those vacancies in one convenient place. Email alerts help you stay up to date with vacancies that you already may be interested in without the daily effort of browsing for new job postings manually. You may browse and apply for vacancies completely for free, although some filters and features like bookmarks and email alerts are accessible to premium subscribers only. You can check out the link in the description box below to see their platform and to sign up for yourself. Thank you so much to Blue Marble Jobs for sponsoring this video. Now let's dive in. The United Nations employs 116,388 people in staff positions. Now I couldn't find statistics on the overall workforce, including consultants and interns. So for the purposes of this video, I'm just looking at those who are on staff contracts. Also for your information, all these statistics come from the latest personnel report, which was published using 2020 data. So there is a little bit of a delay. So let's have a look at various demographic aspects, starting with gender. Of the approximately 116,000 people who work at the UN, 63,868 or 55% are men and 52,520 or 45% are women. Now this is one of those examples where the devil is in the details when it comes to data. Because while these overall numbers look pretty balanced and not bad, there really is a different story if you dive into the gender split at different levels of seniority. If we take just professional positions, for example, we see that many young women are entering in the organization, but by the time they reach the very senior positions, men are in the vast majority. Let me show you what I mean. To explain this, you will need to understand the scale of positions. So P1 is the most entry level and P5 is the highest level before going to a director. And there are two levels of directors. So at P1, a whopping 73% of employees are women, and then it begins to decrease from there. At P2, it's 59%. At P3, it's 48%. At P4, it's 45%. At P5, it's 40%. Then when we get into the director level, D1 is 40%. And D2 is only 35% women. So you can see that while it may be balanced at some levels, ultimately there are more men in higher levels of the organization and in an absolute sense as well. Now I want to pause and take a small sidebar here because frankly, I feel like being a little petty today. Like all YouTubers, I do get trolls on my videos occasionally. And one of my favorite comments I see is that I am a mouthpiece for the UN and that the UN is run by women because they are more gullible and able to be brainwashed. And I think these statistics show very clearly that men actually make up the majority of the UN and are in the highest levels and the most senior positions of the organizations. So, 
Go back and find a new argument, trolls. Thanks, bye. Okay, let's go back to the demographics. Now let's look at nationality. The UN has a very diverse workforce with no single nationality making up more than 4.7% of the total workforce. The top 10 countries hired at the UN are the United States, France, Kenya, Italy, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Ethiopia, Sudan, the United Kingdom, India, and the Philippines. We can also look at this at a regional level, and I think it does provide some helpful insights as well. The region with the most employees in the UN system is Africa. Africa makes up approximately 35.5% of the workforce. Asia is 26%, Europe is 23%, Americas is 14%, and Oceania is 1.5%. Now let's move to age. The largest percentage of staff are between the ages of 40 and 50, and the average age of hiring into a UN staff position is 43 years old. But let's look at the entire distribution for a clearer understanding. People under the age of 25 make up only 0.11% of the entire workforce of the UN. 25 to 30 is 2.4%, 30 to 35 is 8.93%, 35 to 40 is 15.39%, 40 to 45 is 18.91%, 45 to 50 is 18.32%, 50 to 55 is 15.77%, 55 to 60 is 12.85%, 60 to 65 is 7.07%, and 65 plus is 0.25%. Whew, that was a mouthful. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to put this in here is because I do get a lot of questions from people who are pretty young, who are looking to work in the UN system. And so this is where I say really temper your expectations. Perhaps you can get an internship or a consultancy, but you can see that the odds of getting a staff position are quite slim in the UN system if you're under the age of 25. Just something to keep in mind. Now, I also wanted to talk about the entities who hire the most people. As you probably know, the UN has over 30 different funds, programs, and entities, so I thought it would be helpful for people to know which ones are the biggest employers. The largest hiring entities in the UN system in order are the Secretariat, UNICEF, the United Nations High Commission for Refugees, the World Health Organization, the United Nations Development Program, the International Migration Organization, and the World Food Program. So there you have it, folks. That is gender, nationality, age, and organization of employment, according to the most recent personnel statistics. Taking all that together, I'm going to paint a picture of a typical UN employee based on those statistics. So this employee would be an American man aged 43 to 45, working in general services of the United Nations Secretariat for less than five years, likely based in New York. Voila, that is the most statistically probable UN staff member. And I know many of you are probably a little depressed right now. However, as you saw, it is a very diverse organization. So there's no real way to draw a typical archetype. And if you ever have the opportunity to work in the system, you will meet people from all over the world of all different ages, working in all different types of roles and capacities. So that's where I'm gonna wrap up for the day. As always, I do a blog post that summarizes this video in writing and has links to my research and resources where you can learn more. If you learned something in this video, give it a like, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, keep fighting the good fight. Bye. <laughs>